Hey there, welcome to another episode of Board Gems. This week I'm going to cover Power Boats. Power Boats is a racing game uh, designed by Corne van Morsel and published by his own company, Kowali Games, in, I think, 2008. It's for two to six players, ages nine and up, which I think is fair. Uh, it's a very simple game to learn, but it can also be a little bit unforgiving. Mistakes can be punished pretty harshly. So I would avoid playing this with little kids. They might get frustrated. And the box says it takes about an hour to play. Now that's really dependent on whether you do the full three races, which is what the uh, rule suggests, versus just one, which is how I think most people would play, and also how many players, because a six-player game would probably take about three times as long as a two-player game. Now, Power Boats came out at the Essen Spiel Game Fair in October of that year, and uh, the same year, another racing game came out, uh, a game called Snow Tails. So, at the time, those two racing games were were probably compared by a lot of people. And whereas Snow Tails had something that was that brought a little bit something new and unique, like it had a clever mechanism uh, related to. It's a dog sled racing game, so it had a bit of a clever mechanism in terms of how fast you go and how you turn. Whereas Power Boats felt more like a refinement of a dice rolling racing game. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people at the time looked at Power Boats, saw a racing game, saw a dice rolling game, and immediately dismissed it. Oh, a dice rolling racing game, that's kind of, that's, that's not what we're about. Hey, Snow Tails has a new unique thing, let's go look at that. I personally think Power Boats has stood up to the test of time a little bit better than Snow Tails. Um, people are always looking for the, the clever new mechanism, and uh, Snow Tails had it, whereas, like I said, Power Boats is a little bit more of a refinement. But for the type of game that Power Boats is, it's great. And like I said, it's a refinement. It really feels like almost the perfect dice-rolling racing game. I'm going to show you how it plays first. Then afterwards, I'll tell you why I think it's a board gem. Before setting up the game, first decide which side of the board you want to use. There's the darker blue, which is recommended for first time players. If you're experienced, you can use either this side or the lighter blue side. But you have to decide at the beginning which side you're going to use. We're going to set it up with a dark blue. There's a frame with four pieces, so you're going to construct it same color, this in this case is the darker blue, and you're going to take these six boards and you're going to mix them up as best you can, and then you're going to fill this frame. You can orient them this way or this way, it doesn't matter, just try to randomize it. Take the damage markers and place them on this large island here. You'll see this little outline here matches kind of the shape of the damage markers. So that'll be within hopefully reach of all players. And there's a whole bunch of these three-sided dice, and you're going to set these aside to the side of the board for now. We're gonna set this up for a four-player game, these four colors. So you'll see wherever the player is sitting, the color in front of them, that's going to be their color. So we've got black on this side and white on this side. So we're gonna do a four-player game. So you're gonna give out, each player is going to get one of these power boats, as well as a scoring marker, which is the same color, but is a little cardboard thing. If you're playing with three races, you're going to want to uh, put these scoring markers on and to track the score uh, between races. Honestly, you'll probably just wanna set it up for a single race just to see how the game works. So we're going to set it up for a single race. Now to set up the race, you're going to find the letters. There's A, B, and C pre-printed on the board, four of each letter, corresponding to the race, race one, two, or three. If you're just doing one race, I would recommend actually rolling a three-sided die, representing the one representing A, the two B, the C three, and so that's the letters you'll use. So if I rolled a three, so we're gonna use the C's. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take these buoys, they're numbered zero to three, and you're going to 
They're, they're actually quite fragile. I ended up having to glue mine. But you're gonna mix them up and you're gonna randomly place one on each of the letters. In this case, I'm gonna place on the C. And it doesn't matter which way you orient them for now, we'll, we'll fix it. So there's one C there and one C there. Where are all the other Cs? There's one here, right here. So if you do this sort of randomly, you'll have the number zero, one, two, three. And the zero will be where the start and finish line is. So you'll see which direction the letter is pointing. In this case, the letter is on this hex and it's pointing this way. So you're going to place this start and finish line here, extending out from uh, that letter. And you're going to put this finish line. So this is the start, zero, this is the finish. And you're going to, each side has an arrow going in a particular direction. So you'll see it goes this way versus going this way. And you want to do the, the direction that's easiest. So in this case, you wouldn't want to go around, make players go around here. That would be a little hard. So you're gonna, the players are gonna come out from here and then they're gonna go back in from there. So we'll have the arrow for the zero pointing this way. And we'll have the finish line with this arrow uh, pointing pointing that way, as you can see. So it'll be start and then they'll finish. Now we look at the numbers. So one, two, three, and finish. So players are going to go like this. These are double-sided and they show either a clockwise arrows or counterclockwise arrows. And you're going to arrange them in whichever way guarantees that players don't have to make a complete loop. So what I mean by that is that if you were to set it up like this, with the arrows going this way, anti-clockwise, then the power boats, when they're racing, they're going to have to come around and cross their own path to go to the next one. That's what you don't want. So you're gonna set it up so that they don't have to cross their own path, basically, ever. <laughs> At least when traveling from one buoy to another. So the start line is gonna go, go, the player's gonna go from here, and they're going to go around this number one buoy, then around this number two, and around this number three, and then finish. And then you determine the start player. So what we're gonna do is we're going to say that orange is the start player, and play is gonna go clockwise from there. I think that would be easiest. So orange will be going first. However, we're actually going to place the power boats in reverse order. So starting with the player who's, who will be going last, in this case, purple, purple gets to place their boat on any of these spaces or behind it. And they get to choose which direction they want to go. So they're looking, they're gonna to have to go this way. So purple's thinking, oh, I might go this way. And you have to choose a direction, a direction being toward uh, an adjacent hex. So purple might go here with the intention of going this way. And then in this case, red, red might think, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this route. And then yellow, of course, you can also go behind. So yellow might decide to do this. And finally, orange, maybe orange goes over here. Something like that. And now the game proper starts, starting with the player who placed their power boat last and then going clockwise from there. The goal of the game or the race is of course to be the first to cross the finish line or even just land on the finish line after having passed all the buoys on the correct side. So if purple were to go over here, that wouldn't count. They have to cross the buoy on this side. So basically make a complete loop around all the buoys and then cross the finish line. And these arrows here and here show the direction of the start and the finish. So the ships are going to go out this way and they're going to come back in this way. In order to move, you need these dice. They're three-sided dice, they're numbered one to three. And you're going to have a number of these dice face up in front, well, face up. They're, you can't really have a die face up, but this is what I mean by face up, of course. It's showing a, it's showing a two there. 
and you're gonna have these dice showing like this, which is showing your current speed. The first thing you do on your turn is decide if you're happy with the number of dice you have or if you would like to add one or remove one. You can only add or remove at most one die. At the beginning of the race, of course, you have zero dice, so the only thing you can do is add one. When you add a die, you take the die that you've added, along with any dice that you already have there, whichever ones you want to re-roll. You don't have to re-roll any of them if you don't want to. But you would roll this one die in this first turn. Three. And that's, you're going to place that. Of course, this is orange first, right? We're going, okay. So we're going to place three there. And then orange, who's a start player, is going to move three spaces. The next thing that happens after you have, you know exactly how far you're going to move is you choose your direction. The player can either choose to go straight ahead in the direction they're already facing or turn 60 degrees. So orange could either go forward three spaces this way, or three spaces this way, or three spaces this way. In the key, and you can travel through ships, that's completely fine. However, if the space you end on happens to be occupied, then you simply place your ship in the previously, uh, the, first pre uh, the first open space behind it. In that case, you don't have to move. In fact, you're not able to use your full movement, but you can still choose that direction. Or it can go three this way, or it can go three this way. And then it would be yellow's turn. So in this example, purple added one die and rolled a one. Purple has three choices, but not really. If purple were to turn here, they would hit an island and would get one damage. If they were to turn here, they would hit this buoy and take one damage. You can't travel through islands or buoys, you can only travel through other power boats. In this case, the only direction purple can go is straight ahead. But because that space is occupied, again, that ship is going to stop at the first available space behind it. So purple will end up there and will have not moved at all. And that's one complete round. Play is simply clockwise. Now it's orange's turn again. And orange can choose to remove a die or add a die or stay where they are. If orange is happy, orange can simply just move three spaces right now. But let's suppose orange wants to speed up, so orange will add a die. Orange adds a die and then decides, also, out of all the dice that are here, does she want to re-roll any of them? And let's say the answer in this case is no. She's happy with her three because three is a pretty good, like she wants to travel as fast as possible right now. So she's going to keep that three and she's going to add whatever this is. In this case, it's a one. So now orange can move four spaces. And again, orange can choose to go straight ahead four, turn right four, and then, or turn left and go four. Let's say in this case, orange actually will turn left four. Yellow is actually happy with just keeping this result. You see, yellow could add another die or remove one. It would be dumb to remove because then you're not moving at all. Yellow could add a die or could decide, you know what, actually, I just want to re-roll this one. Or yellow could even just say, you know what, I'm happy with my two. And yellow is going to turn left and go forward two spaces, like so. Why would yellow do that? It's not going very far. But the thing is, as you can see, now yellow has a good line to go past this buoy. Yellow's hope is to be able to land on this space so that they can immediately go straight through here. Part of the game is also seeing the lines, identifying the lines um, that, you are, uh, that will allow you to speed up very fast and, uh, and reach your target without having to, to squirm between the islands too much. Let's 
purple is going to add a die and is not going to re-roll. The reason that purple is doing that is because if purple re-rolls that die, then the result could be two threes, at which point purple will definitely take damage. Purple can't turn right, can't turn left, can only go straight. One, two, three, four. Let me show you what happens. If, if purple had to move six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Would hit the island twice, would take two damage. A player is out of the race if they take four damage and they lose all their dice. So purple doesn't want to get a six by accident. Purple could just re-roll that one, try to get a better result, or can keep that one and add another die. In this case, purple rolled a two, so now purple's total is three. And purple is going to move forward three spaces. Now look what orange can do. Orange also wants to get on this line, because this is the best way to reach the buoy. Right now, orange is moving four. If orange moved four on her next turn, she would have no choice but to go this way. Whenever you have three choices of direction, you must always choose the one that gives you the least amount of damage. So in this case, if orange moved four, just kept all her dice, this way she'd go one, two, three, four, and take three damage. Here, same thing. So she would have to go this way. She doesn't want to because now she's gonna to have to slow down and take a couple of turns to go around. So instead, what she can do is she's going to remove the three and go down to one die and just keep that die and not re-roll it. One, she's very happy with one, just like that. And now she's on the line. So play is gonna continue like that, clockwise until one player crosses the finish line or reaches or lands on one of the spaces of the finish line. Um, if you're playing the full three races, then here's what happens. Um, play until everybody but one player is either sunk or finished. And then you're going to, each player is going to score points based on their position. So the player who finished first will get three points in this example, which is the number of players minus one. So this is a four-player game I've set up. Orange would, let's say orange one, orange would get three points. The next, and would move forward three spaces on here. And the next player, let's say it was purple, finished second, purple would get two. Third place would get one, and fourth place, last place, wouldn't get any. And then you would set up a second race using a different letter. And if you're doing the full three races, you're going to use A, B, C. Um, if you're doing the full three races, then in the second race, Obviously, these buoys are going to be in a different position. You're not going to change the boards for the second race. It's the same lake. You're just changing the positions of the buoys. And then the winner of that race, the second race, will actually get twice as many points as they would for first. So if in a four-player game, first place gets three points, in the second race, first, pl first place gets six points. And in the third race, points to triple, so first place will get nine points in a four-player game. Also, damage is repaired between each race. At the end of the first race, any player that has more than one damage marker, and you keep damage markers on here, the player who, any player who has more than one damage marker removes all but one. And for the third and final race, any player who has more than two damage markers removes all but two. So the third race is even more likely you're going to uh, you're going to sink because <laughs> you, you might already start with two damage from the earlier races and you only need four to sink. That's it. You're ready to play Power Boats. What I love about Power Boats is it has a little bit of randomness in the dice rolling, but you have a lot of control, especially if you're going really fast and you want to slow down you're removing dice, but if you have different values of dice in front of you, you can choose which to remove. You can actually have a few turns in a row in which uh, you're slowing down exactly as fast or slow as you want to, and you don't have to roll dice if you don't want to. You can, but it's optional. 
if you get a good variety of dice, you can be very uh, selective in which dice you remove. Turns could be super fast, be especially if you're doing that. Okay, I'm just removing this three. Move three spaces. Okay, your turn. <laughs> it, the turns can be really, really fast. And you only roll dice if you add new dice, so you're going faster, or if you want to re-roll dice at your current speed, or if you're slowing down, you can. Um, it's really up to you. So the luck of the dice doesn't feel very punishing. But the game is very punishing. It can be, in that it rewards thoughtful play. There's something really satisfying about navigating through a tight little inlet, you know, maneuvering around, pulling dice out, adding new ones, you know, evaluating the risk of getting a one or a two instead of a three. Three's too fast, you know. Do I roll? Do I re-roll? What should I do? But navigating through a little tricky little area and getting a good line afterwards is really satisfying. This game really supports thoughtful play especially since it punishes less thoughtful play. Because the rules are really simple, it's tempting for new players to come in and kind of play casually. One, I don't consider it a flaw. Um, rewarding thoughtful play and punishing unthoughtful play is kind of the same thing in a way, right? Um, but new players coming in can sometimes have some difficulty visualizing it because sometimes you think like, okay, a new player might go, okay, I'm going, I need to go over here to the right and I'll go this way and I'm going to hit that island, which is bad, but at least afterwards I'll have a good line uh, to go continue from there. And then they try to do it and you may have to remind them, it's like, well, actually every time you move and you have the option of turning, you have to take the path that results in the least damage to your ship. You can't choose to go right and take damage just to have a good line if you are able to go left and take no damage or take less damage. So in this case, you have to go left. And they're like, oh, but I want to go right. And it's like, I'm sorry, it's gonna, you're going to have to take four or five turns to get around and go through this area before you get back on track. So that's really punishing. Um, so new players might not like that. But again, it simply rewards preparing, looking a couple turns ahead, evaluating the risk of re-rolling dice, you know, and um, and there's something really satisfying about about that planning, that, the, that planning. So this is one of my favorite racing games. Now, my favorite racing game is Ave Caesar, but that's a different beast. Ave Caesar is all about uh, getting in each other's way and blocking and saying bad words at each other and you can't help but hurt the other player and that's part of uh, the charm. Power Boats is a different racing game entirely. Uh, there's very little blocking. The only way you can really block is you occupy a space that the other player was really hoping to land on so they have a better line than, than they otherwise would if they come up one, one space short. But it's not really blocking. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really thoughtful game, and I like the planning ahead. I like games that have simple rules, but from those simple rules, a really thoughtful experience emerges, one in which you can plan ahead. Maybe you can't plan ahead too far. It's not chess, but still, you, you, li you like to sit in front of the game and you like to think a little bit. Um, and be rewarded for that, then Powerboats is a great racing game for you. Another racing game you may want to consider is Mississippi Queen, which had a recent reprint, and even though Mississippi Queen isn't exactly a hidden gem, I may still cover that, because even the recent re-release doesn't have insanely high ratings. So Mississippi Queen is another racing game that I strongly recommend if you're into a thoughtful, but still fun, racing experience. I should mention that Powerboats had a sequel, it came out uh, 10 years later, uh, called Power Ships. And some of the perceived flaws of Power Boats was addressed in this edition. Some of the perceived flaws, um, the damage in Power Boats, for one thing. You take damage, but there's no way to repair damage during a race. You can only repair damage at the end of a race. And you're expected to do three races. Three races is insane! I can't imagine doing three races if you're playing with any more than two players, really. <laughs> I always just do one race. Um, three races, 
six players would take forever, at least two hours. Um, so power ships is just one, just one race. And there's a way in power ships that you can repair damage during the race. If you don't make any changes, you can just keep your current course and speed and remove one damage. And damage actually does something. In power boats, if you take four damage, you're just out of the race. In power ships, you take damage, it kind of limits how fast you can go. Um, so there's a lot to like about power ships, and power ships goes with the seven players. I do find I like power boats more. Uh, this is personal preference. One reason I like power boats more is that it's much more intricate. Um, the racing track, if you want to call it that, the racing play field, is very crowded. There's lots of islands. Sometimes the paths between the islands are very narrow and trying to come up with the path between them. It's kind of an intricate planning experience. Whereas power ships, because it's set in space, is much more wide open. Um, so also it's a little less punishing because even if you make a mistake, it just means you have a slightly worse line. It doesn't mean you have to take five turns to get around to where you want it to go. Um, so if I were to look at a list of pros and cons of power boats versus power ships, on paper, power ships would be the winner. And if you're able to, uh, if you're interested in it, you may want to check out power ships as an alternate to power boats. Having said that, if I could choose one of the two, I'd choose power boats. I like the fact that you really have to think and, and plan ahead a little bit. And I also find the setup in power ships to be really annoying <laughs> because um, it's a bunch of oddly shaped boards that fit together in a certain way. And it seems like every time I set it up, I make some mistake and there's a, a gap between the boards here. And it's like, wait a second, how did I, how can I move this here and this here? And this actually should be down here. Um, I always make mistakes when I set up the board for power ships, so. I don't know, of the two, I personally prefer power boats, but if you're interested in power boats and you can't find it and you're able to get a copy of power ships, I strongly suggest you, you look at that. It does have a lot of pros, like I said, on paper, compared to power boats. It's, for me, it's just personal preference. I like the rewarding of thoughtful play that power boats provides. So I'm gonna try something new with this episode. Um, it's sometimes, because I don't like the game a lot, it's sometimes hard for me to kind of point out some of its flaws. This whole series, the point of this series, is for me to highlight games that I think are really, really good, but are a bit older and I want to bring some more attention on them again. Um, but because their ratings are generally lower, at least they're not super high, like lower than 7.0, they can be kind of divisive picks. There are lots of people who maybe play the game recently and don't like it. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is, for this, is I'm going to do what, like, a kind of like a hot take. Um, what I have is I've loaded up here, um, Board Game Geek, and I have brought up all the ratings that are 4 out of 10, that have rated the game 4 out of 10, and have comments. So I haven't read these in advance, but I'm going to read them out loud. I apologize, I, I'm not going to credit the users, but I'm just going to use these as kind of random negative uh, reactions that I, I see about this game and just my response to them. So let's see, let's start scrolling here. Uh, not bad, but leaves you going, so what? If you have a sheet of hex paper, you're halfway to owning this game. <laughs> um, I guess, I mean, if you want to draw the islands yourself, you can say that about a lot of games though. Um, I think the dice mechanism is uh, really clever and this user is not, uh, is not giving that, uh, that enough credit. Besides, where are you going to get the three-sided dice? I guess you have to get a bunch of blank six-sided dice and write one, one, two, two, three, three on them. My one play of this was a good finisher to a big day of heavy games. It worked well for that purpose, but I won't seek it out again. Afterwards, we discussed the idea of some simple rules for mounting machine guns to our boats. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, you could definitely uh, do something with that, probably. Um, I know another racing game that happens to like quite a bit is uh, uh, Thunder Alley. It's a stock car racing game. Not even really a fan of stock car, but I think the game is great. Even though I'm more of a fan of an open-wheel racing game, I actually don't like its sequel, Grand Prix, all that much. But the third in the series is a car combat game, which I'm actually really curious about. Good feel of power boating, perhaps too much luck. 
I mean, as it has less luck than a typical dice rolling game. I'll say that, um, and still rewards thoughtful play. But of course, there is always going to be luck. Rolling dice is fun, and if you can have a dice rolling game that minimizes that luck through through some clever uh, mechanisms, I think that's a winner. It's fun to race. The emotions are great. The social aspect is excellent. But as a game, Power Boats is just so-so. It's one of those why bother games. Uh, well, you said it yourself. It's fun to race. The emotions are great. The social aspect is excellent. That's like nine-tenths of what you want in a game. I, I do get a kick out of the fact that a game can really make for an enjoyable experience. And I know some some hobbyists. I have some friends who are like this who I'll play a game with, and you can see they're having a great time, fantastic game, laughing and carrying on. I'm thinking, this game is great. And then I check their ratings maybe the next day because they're very good at rating their games, and they rate it 4 out of 10. <laughs> I was like, I could tell you had fun in this game. I guess the counterpoint to that is those types of people, you know, they can have fun with almost any game, and it's more the people that you're playing with in the game. The game almost doesn't matter. Um, so I guess you could argue that, um, a game, just because a game makes for a fun experience, most of that fun experience is coming from the players and not necessarily the game. And you could substitute a different game in and you could still have a great time. Um, I guess, but the game helped facilitate that good experience. And if you have fun with the game, that's what the game set out to do. So it succeeded. On paper, Power Boats is a knockout. The endless die modifiers of race games like Formula D have been replaced with a clean upshift-downshift mechanism built on adding, removing three-sided dice. Genius. Yet the result is astonishingly bland. A small expansion adds more lake flavor to the blue grid. That's true, there is an expansion I didn't mention. It adds, like, jumps and stuff, which sound great. I don't feel like the game really needs it, but... Um, if you're able to get a used copy of Power Boats, you can still get the expansion from Koali Games. The real issue is that this is a very pure roll and move. Disagree. I mean, there's some turns you don't even roll the dice. You don't have to if you don't want to. So, I don't know, disagree with that. I wonder if it would be more fun if all players rolled real time over and over again until somebody crossed the finish line. Okay, buddy. <laughs> disagree. Simple dice rolling game, very easy to get massively wrecked with a single bad dice roll. So, yes to the first part. Very easy to get massively wrecked. Uh, this game punishes mistakes, and that could definitely be a downside. Um, due to a single bad dice roll, uh, there is the luck aspect, but you can also see ahead. Like, based on this path, at this point, maybe two turns ahead, I'm going to have to re-roll some dice and hope I get lucky. But you chose that path and you put yourself in that position for that risk. Maybe you calculated the risk and it's like, oh, I got a two out of three chance of making a good roll. And you get the one out of three and you curse the bad dice luck. But you, the route you chose to take, you chose that route with the hopes of getting a good roll later. And you didn't get the good roll, so you curse the bad dice luck. But I would also argue that's part of the path you took. I do this, 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 and then I have to take a chance. I do this, 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 I took the chance and it failed. It's the chance's fault, not my own fault. Just just my hot take. Uh, cute game and seems good, but somehow I did not see it arousing enthusiasm. Uh, not sure why. A lot of Koali games are like that, actually, but I still like the games because they're very mechanical. Um, they don't have a lot of what we call chrome, which is like extra mechanisms that the theme brings in just to kind of up the, either the realism factor or the fun factor. But those can make a game complicated. So, um, but I can understand some people might find it a little bland. I don't understand the popularity of this game. You get in boats and drive around a track with no extra cards to do anything interesting. Just you and adjusting your speed and trying to not get stuck in a clump of weeds. So, yeah, I want to comment about the extra cards bit because that's a really popular thing nowadays. Um, it feels like every older game that comes out now, there's a, a compulsion among the publishers or maybe among the gamers who are demanding this release. Like, but need something more. Maybe each player has their own special power that they can do. Um, or maybe get a hand of cards to kind of spice up the game. That's 
that's the current mindset of, of hobby gamers. And I just want to say there's a subset of gamers that really want not to have that. I mean, you can throw the cards in the box, and if some people like that, great. But I would like the option to not have to use them. Okay, just play the old way. Um, I do not like having a hand of cards. Um, some people think, well, it's, you know, it just makes it more fun, or it, it gives you one more thing to think about. It's like, yeah, I want to think about the game. I don't want to think about all this going on, too. Sometimes it just gets in the way of the game, right, these cards. And it can affect your planning, you know, especially if you have, like, cards like, oh, you thought you were going to move four spaces. Aha, uh -huh. well, I play this card. Now you only move two. Now that's messed up your, your line. No, thank you. Uh... Yeah, that's basically it. So uh, something I'm trying, maybe I'll try it with some other uh, videos in the future. Just look at some of the fours out of tens and uh, do my hot take on them. Um, just something a little bit funny because I'm not really able super well to describe all the bad parts of a game. Obviously the game does have maybe not bad parts, bad parts to some people, right? The ratings are not super high. This is like 6.7 or something out of 10. Not bad, but not top tier certainly so there is some parts of the game that some people won't like and even though i can kind of see what they are i'm perhaps not super able to vocalize them so there's something new i'm trying i might do this with future videos um yeah so that's that's power boats um still one of my favorite racing games and this game is never leaving my collection thanks for watching remember old games like power boats don't stop being good just because new games come out take care